we start on the topic of the limit of a function. Um, a few things to note before we begin is that we have the left limit as well as the right limit. And please check the notation for the left limit. It's A with that negative sign at the top, or should I say the superscript. And also the right limit has got that A uh, plus, which is the superscript. So we say the limit uh, of f of x as x approaches, or should I say, gets pretty close to the value x equal to a from the left hand side is equal to l and also if we get a value um, of f of x when we approach that value a from the right hand side then we are able to say the limit of f of x as x approaches a from the right is equal to L. Now I need you to note that both the left limit and the right limit are equal to the same value, which is L. And if that is the case, then we are able to say we do have a limit of f of x as x approaches a which is equal to L. That is being taken care of by that statement. Now we're able to say we do have a limit of f of x as x approaches a, which is equal to a, and note that this is on condition that both the right limit and the left limit are equal to the same value, which is L. Now note also that we are able to find limits of functions, um, whether they are given algebraically or graphically. So now the first um, example that we have here is where we've been given a graph of f of x. Note, this is a piecewise defined function. So we're supposed to first find the limit as x approaches 2 from the left hand side. And looking at this graph, we're approaching 2 from the left. It means we have to consider the left piece of this graph that we have. So what happens as the values of x are getting bigger and bigger, getting close to 2? What is happening with the function f of x? As we can see that the function looks like it's a, function, a piece of a parabola. So it, this function approaches the value 3. on the y-axis. So we are able then to say the left limit of f of x as x approaches 2. The limit, that's the last number on the y-axis that this function is approaching as x approaches 2. We are able to say our answer for, for a is looking at our graph. Now note for the right limit. We cannot take the left piece because as you can see the left piece has been drawn between negative 2 and 2 only. So we can only approach 2 from the left using the first piece. But if we want to approach two from the right hand side we have to use the piece that has been drawn between two and seven which is the second piece because now we are able to consider the values of f from as as x approaches two from the right hand side because 
we have 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7 on the right hand side. Now, what is the value of f of x at that point? So I believe that it's corresponding to something like 1.1, 1.2. I believe it's corresponding to 1.3. So from the right hand side, whatever is happening to this function, it goes up and it goes down. But as we get closer and closer to 2, the function goes down and approaches the function value, which is on the y-axis, 1.3. So I'll write here, 1.3. I'm hoping that you are able to read um, the writing that is being given by my mouse. Now, the next thing that we have is C. C is asking us to find the limit as x approaches 2. Now we have to go back to the definition given to us in number 3, definition 3, which says if both the right limit and the lim left limit have the same value, which is L, then we are able to say the function as, it, as x approaches A is equal to that function value. Now we have a problem. A has given us a left limit, which is 3. B has given us a right limit, which is uh, 1.3. So we are having a problem of discontinuity between or, or, or at the value x is equal to 2. This function is not continuous between you at the value x equal to 2. So therefore, we are saying the limit does not exist as x approaches 2 because we have a problem at that point. There is a jump in this function. The function on the left or is the function on the left and the function on the right of 2. They are discontinuous at or there is a jump at x equal to 2. Now, the next one, D, is asking us to look at the left limit when x approaches 5. x approaches 5, that is where 5 is. It means that we are looking only at the right piece of this function. What is happening is x increases until you get to 5. You can see that that our function approaches 2 as x approaches 5. So we can be able to say 2 here. And I'm hoping that you are noticing that we are using only the interval that has got 5 in it. And the only interval that has got 5 is between 2 and 7, which means is the second piece. And now again, when you approach from the right, as you go down from 7 to 5, what is happening to the function? The function value goes, the function, as we've seen it in the sketch, it goes up until it reaches its turning point corresponding to the value 2. So once again, we do have 2 as our answer here. Therefore, we are able to say because the left limit and the right limit of f of x as x approaches 5, both equal to 2, then that means the limit of this function as x approaches 5 is 2. I'm hoping that we, this is clear. Now, one other thing that is being brought to us by limits, left limits and right limits, is what is known as the vertical asymptote. The vertical asymptote is the line note. It must be the line x equal to a. As long as one of these 
definitions hold. Either you have the left limit equal to infinity and the right limit equal to infinity or the general limit as x approaches a is equal to infinity or you have your answer as negative infinity. Either of those six statements must be true. Then you'll have a vertical asymptote at the line x equal to a. Now let's look at um, the example that we have here. Our f of x is 2x over x minus 3. So we're looking for the limit from the left of 3 and from the right of 3. We want to check what is the vertical asymptote. Now, I need you to confirm that that is true. And guess what? The only way to do that is to draw a table. That's what I always prefer. Draw a table. The first row is x and the second row is f of x. And you use your calculator to get those values of f of x. Now note you are choosing values that are very close to 2 to 3. Now you are looking at getting close to 3 from the right hand side. Getting close to 3 from the right hand side. So it means you are looking at values bigger than 3 values bigger than 3 but closer to 3. So you may start with 3.1 um, then um, remember you are getting close to 3 so you are not going to go to 3.2 you are going to go closer to 3, 3 point maybe 0, 1 and then maybe 3.0 my mouse is acting up 3.001 and 3.001 you substitute each of those values and see what is happening 3.1 what does it give you and then 3.01, what does it give you? 3.001, what does it give you? You may even check 3.001. You may even check 3.001 so that you get to see what is happening. And then you draw a conclusion. Okay, are my values getting smaller or bigger? So if they're getting bigger, then that means your values, your function values, are getting closer and closer to infinity. Even you do the same with the left limit. You may start at, um, say, uh, 2.9 and then 2.99. Remember, you are getting closer to 3 from the left. 2.9, 2.99, 2.999. 2.9999 and see what are you getting are, are your values getting smaller or bigger remember you are substituting this onto the function 2x divided by x minus 3 so if your values are getting smaller and smaller remember when i'm saying smaller you need to remember that negative 1 is bigger than negative 2 Negative 2 is bigger than negative 100. Negative 100 is bigger than negative 1000. So when we're saying you're getting smaller, your values, uh, you are going closer and closer to negative infinity. Therefore, you can be able to conclude that your vertical asymptote is at the line x equal to 3. Now, 
we go to f of x equal to 10x. Um, the first thing that I did was to change 10x to sine x over cos x to make life simple for me. And then in order for you to get your limits, remember the limits are not given for this problem. Then what you do, you take your denominator, which is cos x, and equate it to zero and solve. And I'm sure your calculator would give you 90 degrees or power 2 in radians. Please note that we work with radians and not with um, degrees. So you're getting x equal to power 2. Now in my head, I have the graph of 10x in my uh, clearly. I know that I don't have one vertical asymptote, but all I know is that x over power 2 x equal to power 2 is one of the asymptotes so i need to check using limits whether it is true so we do the same draw the table draw the table and look at the limit as you are getting closer and closer to pi over 2 from the right and from the left and please confirm whether my values are true you do exactly what you did in the previous example, where you draw the table, do those substitutions. You need to figure out, you may, um, because you are familiar with degrees, you may use, um, uh, your table may have degrees on it. So you know, when you get closer to 90 from the right hand side, it means you have 90.1, 90. 90.1. 01, 90.001, 90.001, 90.001, and you get to see what is happening. And then from the left, you may use 89.9, 89.99, and check what's going on. And then you'll be able to see that the limits are true. And then you can be able to say that, okay, then X is a vertical asymptote, but then you know. 10x does not only have one asymptote, it has many asymptotes. Uh, if you had drawn your graph of 10x from 0 to 90 degrees, sort of to 360 degrees, then you'd know at 90 you have um, a vertical asymptote and also at 270. So it means 90 is power 2, 270 is 3 pi over 2. So that means if you were going to draw it to 720, then it would mean you have 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2. Those, as you can see, the, the coefficients of pi over 2 are all odd numbers. Then your general formula for odd numbers, it's either 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1. If it's to n minus 1, it means n starts from 0 to n minus 1. But if it's to n, n to n plus 1, n starts from 0. And then to n minus 1, then your n starts at 1. Also, for lin x, what you need to do is to draw the graph and then you'll be able to realize that it's not possible, or oh, sorry, it, it, it's not possible for lin x or log x base a to touch the y axis. So therefore the line x equal to zero is your vertical asymptote. Uh, here are some exercises. We have um, a graph there where you're supposed to check the left limit and the right limit as x approaches 1. Left limit and right limit as x approaches 1. And then the limit as x approaches 5. And then E, you are asked the, what is the function value of y as x is equal to at x equal to 5. 
when you're approaching one from the left, I'm hoping that you are noticing that you are going to be using the left piece because it's the one that is old has values of one and values that are less than one. And then also for the right limit, you are going to move from values greater than one towards one. So that means you use the second piece. I'm hoping that you'll be able to do this problem. Number two, three pieces of this piecewise defined function. Um, as x approaches zero from the left, we use the left piece because it's got numbers that are less than zero. And then for the right piece, um, the right limit as x approaches zero, we use the middle piece because it also has zero in its domain. And then figure out whether that limit exists or not so that we'll be able to answer C and then D. As X approaches 2 from the left, you use the middle piece because it does have 2 in its domain because it has been drawn between 0 and 2. And then you can approach X from the right as well. Then you are able to use the last piece. And also you can be able to find the other limits. Um, to determine the vertical asymptote for this problem, you are trying to figure out, remember vertical asymptotes require you to have infinity or minus infinity as your answer for your left limit or your right limit. Limits are not given, so you need to factorize that denominator and you give us the factors in the denominator. And then you equate your denominator to zero. Solve for x. It gives you the two values of x. So that means you're finding the limits based on the values of a that you got when you were factorizing your denominator. Then check whether you're going to get infinity or negative infinity for each. Here are some of the laws of limits. Distributivity of the limit. Whether you are adding or subtracting or doing a scalar multiple or a product or a quotient or um, it's the nth root or it is um, the nth power, it's the same. Also note that the limit of a constant is that constant as x approaches a. Also, number nine, the limit of f of x as x approaches a is the same as f of a. I hope you still remember that the left limit and the right limit must exist in order for you to have number nine. We apply this, these rules to these problems. Note that when you are familiar with these kind of problems, you don't have to write all the steps. Also, once you've substituted uh, the value for a, you don't write lim. So, k good was just to show you the distributi distributivity of the limit and how then you substitute the values for x. Also, we did the same thing for number two, where you distribute the limit to the numerator and denominator and substitute. Please check before you do your substitution, especially in the denominator, check whether your answer for the denominator is not going to be zero. Because if it's going to be zero, then you, it means you have to simplify, factorize, so that you eliminate anything that will give you zero once you've substituted your in your denominator. Some of the problems um, are here where you've got x squared minus one and x minus one. Immediately you look at your function and the limit is x approaching one. 
you know, you cannot just simply substitute x approaching 1 in there because your denominator is going to be 0. So it means you simplify your numerator so that you get rid of x minus 1. And then you are left with x plus 1. Then you can substitute x equal to 1 in. Your answer is 2. Now we get to a different um, kind of a problem where you have now the square root. And you've got t squared in the denominator and your limit is 0. So you cannot just substitute 0 in. So the best way is to rationalize the numerator because it has a square root. Multiply out and then you, you see that you are only left with t squared in the numerator and t squared into the square root of t squared plus 9 plus 3. t squared and t squared cancelled out and you were left with that expression. Then in that expression you can be able to substitute 0 in simplify and we got 1 over 6. Let's do more problems. Um, here are some. Some are easy to factorize, some are not so easy to factorize, and some require you to do a whole lot of simplification. Some require you to do um, rationalization of either the numerator or the denominator before you can be able to substitute your given limit. So please attempt this and um, check whether you are mathematically correct. Also number 13, I believe now we're given again a piecewise defined function and note that this time it's not sketched. You have to figure out which piece features um, which uh, of the given problems. Note that every time we give you a limit, it must be within the domain of that function every time. Then we go straight to continuity. Using what you already know, a function is continuous if Mind you, it is continuous at a particular number, x equal to a, only if that limit exists. But what does it really mean? There are three requirements for a limit to exist. Those three have to be met. f of a must be defined. That means f of a must exist as long as a is in the domain of f. So it is very important that a must be in the domain of f, then f of a can be calculated. Secondly, the limit as x approaches f must exist. And then lastly, a and b must be equal. Then we'll say f is continuous. Let's do some uh, examples on continuity. Note that every time we're given problems, the three, the three requirements have to be met before you can draw a conclusion whether a function is continuous or not. Okay, then in the, in this example, we are trying to figure out whether the three requirements for continuity have been met. So example 1a, as we can see, the domain of f of x is x a real number, but x not equal to 2, because the numerator is a polynomial. But then the problem is the denominator. So it means that f into f you can never be able to substitute x equal to 2. So f of 2 is not defined. So the, the very first requirement of continuity has not been met. Then you are able to say f is discontinuous at 2. Now let's look at the second problem. Now this one has, is a piecewise defined function. 1 over x for x not equal to 0 and 1 when x equal to 0. 
first thing, we are able to find g of 0. Because when x is 0, the function value is 1. It has been given to us. So the first requirement has been met. The second requirement, the limit must exist as x approaches a. Our a is 0 in this case. So no matter how you can manipulate that expression, you'll always get a 0 in your denominator. Therefore, we're able to say the limit does not exist. So the second requirement that the limit must exist has not been met. Then we're able to say we have a discontinuity at the value x equal to 0. Going to the third problem. Our h has been given for x not equal to 2 and for x equal to 2. So we go straight to the three requirements. The first requirement, h of a must be equal to or must be defined. So we have here at x equal to 2, our function value is 1. So h of 2 is 1. That is sorted. The second uh, requirement is that the limit of h of x must exist as x approaches 2. So we manipulate it. This is what we have. And then we know we can be able to manipulate the numerator, factorize it so that we cancel x minus 2 and x minus 2. And our answer is 3. But then the challenge is, so the first requirement has been met. The second requirement that the limit exists has been met. But the third requirement is not met because the limit that we find in the second requirement must be exactly equal to h of a. That is the first requirement. So still we have a discontinuity at 2. I'm hoping that you'll be able to do now number 2 by choosing a value that is inside that interval. You may choose 0 0.5, 0 0.6, 0 0.7, or negative 0 0.8, negative 0 0.6, 0 0.7. So whichever value, it must be entirely inside that domain. And then be able to check the left limit and the right limit, and then see whether you're getting the same values. Then be able to say whether the function is continuous at your chosen point. Now, one of uh, other requirements or things that we just need to note is that a polynomial is always continuous everywhere on the real line because we know it exists whenever x is an element of real numbers. Also, number two, rational functions. We know rational function must be p of x divided by q of x, where both p of x and q of x are polynomials. So whenever you have a rational function, you must have a domain. And therefore, we say all of them, all rational functions are continuous in their domain, in their given domain. Also for composite functions, a composite function will be continuous if both the functions comprising of that composite function are continuous at that given point. We quickly go to the horizontal asymptote where we take limits to infinity. Note now, instead of the vertical asymptote, which was x equal to l, here we have y equal to l as our horizontal asymptote. And the requirement is that it's either the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x is equal to l, or as x approaches negative infinity is equal to l. So either of the two. Now another thing that we have to note are these two. The limit 
of 1 over x power r whenever r is positive. Either x approaches infinity or x approaches negative infinity. The answer is 0. Whether we have 1 over x, 1 over x squared, 1 over x cubed, 1 over x to the power 4, the answer is 0. Here are some examples where we apply the limits to infinity. Now, I need you to note one thing also. When we evaluate limits to infinity, the first thing you do is to take the highest power of your variable in the denominator use it and divide each and every term in your numerator and your denominator before you can be able to evaluate your limit. This only occurs when you are either looking for a limit to infinity or limit to is limit to infinity. Remember, that we said the limit to inf for x approaching infinity um, for 1 over x power r will always be equal to 0 if r is positive. So looking at this, we have um, all the powers of x are positive. So you take the highest power of x in your denominator and you divide by it. So it simplifies your expressions and then you take your limit knowing that the limit of 1 over x is 0, the limit of 2 over x squared is also 0, the limit of 4 over x will be 0, and the limit of 1 over x squared will also be 0, because your limit is infinity. Then your answer is 3 over 5. Therefore, it gives us the horizontal asymptote to be the line y equal to 3 over 5. Now note that for number 2, it gets a bit complicated now because we've got a square root. So there is no need for you to rationalize here. What you do, remember, for the limit of a function as x approaches infinity, in order for us to simplify it, you take the highest power of x in the denominator and divide by it throughout. So that's what I did. Divide your numerator by x and the denominator by x. Note that you have a square root in your numerator. So you have to put x inside the square root. We have to remember the square root of x is square root of x squared is x. So therefore, if you want to put x under the square root sign, it has to be x squared. So that you can be able to simplify what's in, what is the argument of your square root. And then, remember, we are able to distribute the limit under the square root sign. If you still remember the laws, so you can be able to take the limit of 2, and the limit of 1 over x squared under the square root. The limit of a constant will always be a constant, but the limit of 1 over x squared as x approaches infinity is 0. So we do simplify the denominator as well, and that's why our answer is square root of 2 over 3. Therefore, our horizontal asymptote is the line y equal to square root of 3 over 2. Number three, now we have a situation where we don't have a rational function, we don't have a quotient, we just have a problem where we have a square root sign. So what's the first thing to do? Do rationalization so that you are able to, to get the highest power of x in the denominator. So when we multiply out, this is what we ended up with. And after simplification, 
that's what we got. Now the highest power of x in the denominator is 1. So we divide by x throughout. And then take the limit and our answer is 0. So the line y equal to 0 is the horizontal asymptote. Here are some uh, exercises that you can do. Now the question is asking for you to recall both the horizontal and vertical asymptotes. What are the requirements? How do you find the horizontal asymptote? How do you find the vertical asymptote? Please um, work on these problems and um, I hope you will be able to get them right.